When you start putting holes in brick walls, it can get to be pretty scary, but today we're putting it all back together again. I think you're gonna like what we're doing here at the Project House, coming up next on For Your Home. We're six weeks into the renovation project of this 30-year-old brick ranch. Our goal is to update every square inch and give it a new, great contemporary design style. We started with an overgrown, neglected home, and then we just tore the heck out of it. We didn't leave much standing. Walls were torn down, foundations repaired, new framing was done, and we're just finishing up our rough-in trades so we can get our inspections and keep this project moving forward. When you're standing in a house with no walls, it might be hard to imagine that we have already ordered all the custom cabinets for this house. This is Alicia Walls, and she's with Forever Cabinets. Hey, Alicia. Hello, Vicki. So good to see you in person, because Alicia and I have been working long distance with each other. That's right, Vicki. Uh, we're located in Edgewood, Iowa, um, but with our design software and the email communication, we're able to send things back and forth easily. Interesting thing about our company is we've done cabinets in Chicago, the Twin cities, Kansas City, and now we're happy to say we're out here in Charlotte. Well, you know, I was really concerned about this because I knew I wanted them to do the work for me. I had seen some of their work before, but I said, gosh, how's that going to be? There's so many designs that you have to go through and questions and all, but it worked great because we would go, like I'd go into Pinterest or House or different magazines, and I would send you images and say, I really like this, I don't like this, and it worked out great. It did work out nicely. Uh, something a little different about your project is that you actually worked with a design designer Janine. Um, so the two of you came up with the basic design and layout for the home and then after that was completed the two of us were actually able to go through and just fine-tune the cabinet layout. And you had a lot of great ideas too about what to do with some of the areas like for example we changed the hood design to be a square wooden hood that we're going to put a flat screen TV in right, which I think is great. Right. For those who like to watch the news over breakfast. Okay now you know, I think that it's really amazing that there are so many decisions that are ha have to be made so early on. Why do cabinets have to be made so quickly? Correct, Vicki. Uh, it, it really helps to have your cabinet design pinpointed really early in the process. Uh, that way when your um, other contractors come in, your plumbing, electrical, they have a plan and can work off of your cabinet design to ensure that your outlets and your plumbing things are in the correct location. Saves a lot of headache down the road if things are, are planned ahead of time. Exactly, and custom cabinets usually take how long to, to get? Generally, six to eight weeks uh, after kind of the final selections are made. Sometimes sooner, it just it just depends on the project. Yeah, yeah. And if you're changing walls around, you got to put that into consideration and wait for a little while. Well, Correct. to end the suspense here, this is what we ended up with. This is our door style. Yes, it is. All right, let's talk about this door style. Uh, we call the door style Providence. We did do some custom altering to it. Um, we did change the edge profile. Our standard door has more of a cove. We went with the square edge. Uh, lends itself more to the contemporary styling of this home. And that was another home. thing that we did long distance. You took photographs of different door styles, the edges of them, and said, all right, this is what you want, but the inside doesn't look anything like you want, but here's the outside edge. We're changing this. We're and it was like, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Pair the two great. together and um, what we came up with works perfect for the home. And since this is a custom color, you know, I selected this color, went to the paint store, picked it out, told you what it was. You and bet. It is great. It's exactly what I wanted. This Correct. Gray color. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a really rich gray. Um, I was telling you earlier, we have a sample that's a little lighter, but I really love the richness of this custom color. Well, with stainless steel and contemporary and iron, like for the chandeliers, I think it's going to be great. Okay, now we also have custom colors coming on all of the other cabinetry. Let's go through these as well. Right, right. Um, in our laundry space, we're doing the pure white. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to the Jack and Jill, which is a little lighter gray. And the powder room is kind of an off white color, the Eater White, uh -huh. and then in the master bathroom we're doing actually a matte finish on natural walnut, um, which is actually beautiful, uh, one of our top selling species right now. Well, you know, walnut is such a beautiful color, and with the mid-century modern look coming back into a lot of contemporary spaces, this is what they would have used on furniture in the 50s and 70s, Great. and I love this going into the master because it's not gender specific. Right. Exactly. It's just as nice as, you know, and we've kind of been there with a the white bathroom, so it's a nice change for us to do, to go with this way. Well, I can't wait to get all the cabinets delivered, and, you know, I know that they're going to be absolutely beautiful. I picked out the hardware already, and, 
It's being shipped to your place. So about how much longer before the cabinets will be ready? Uh, they'll be ready probably in two weeks um, to ship out. Um, wow. We're just waiting for the <laughs> hardware to be here. Um, we have most of them out the door already. So uh, just some finishing hardware touches and we'll be ready to uh, head on out to North Carolina well, again. Uh, I can't wait. And so I know you want to meet with Josh. And yes. He's in the back room in the okay, master bathroom waiting for you. You can get your last film yep, measurement. Sounds good. Thank Thanks, you, Vicki. Once Alicia and I finalized all the plans for the cabinetry, then it was time for a little retail therapy. Now, when I'm talking retail therapy, I'm not talking about shoe shopping. I'm talking about shopping for appliances. But you know, now that I stop and think about it, I think I like shopping for appliances more than shopping for shoes. Take a look. I'm headed into Ferguson's to make my appliance and bath selections. You know, Charlotte has expanded its design district so much. Here in the South End, there's all types of designer showrooms. You can really get all your shopping done in one or two days for any project that you have in mind. Here at Ferguson's, it's pretty much a one-stop shop for me. I can pick out appliances, do some lighting shopping, and do bath fixtures at the same time. I've got my blueprints, my cabinet layouts. I'm going to go in and meet my design consultant, Suzanne. So come on. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, how are you today? Oh, so great to see I'm you. So, yeah, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you Not so much. Not much longer, much. right? No, that's exactly right. Well, I figured I'd better hurry in here and show you the plans to the new project house while you were still working. That would be great. <laughs> I can't wait to see them. OK. So let's take a look. All right. OK. So. This just gives you an idea of the overall layout that we're, that we're working with and with our kitchen. Oh, beautiful. And this is a little different than my house. We're mm -hmm. kind of flip-flopping some things around. We have a 36-inch range. Okay. Um, sink in the corner this time. Dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And over here is going to be kind of a little entertainment area. So we'll have a wine cooler or a beverage cooler there. Wonderful. Um, laundry room with a stackable washer and dryer. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and then great. we have uh, two bathrooms and a powder room. Wonderful. And of course, lots of lighting. So we're going to be here a while, right? We will, but the good thing is, is we can take a look at everything today. Okay. No problems. Well, let's go ahead and start with the appliances. Okay, let's start there. And you know, I am totally wide open to look at all the new things that are the latest, and then whatever we end up liking, that's where we'll go. Okay, so what are people saying they want in their kitchens? They really want that professional chef. Too many you know, iron chef shows, huh? That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly, we all are personal chefs. You know? yeah. The stainless steel, the hearty look, all of those great features is what they're looking for. So we'll walk in here and take okay. a couple look. All right. So are you finding then that manufacturers are kind of answering that by their design changes? They sure are. Okay, now are the features really different as well to get that professional look or are they still pretty much the same inside, they just look different. There will be some feature differences, but it's still us as the end user that want the same basic uses that we have every day. So okay. good lighting, good cooling when we're talking about refrigeration, uh -huh. you know, lots of storage, ease of use. And that's what you'll see when you have these designs. Now these are built-in refrigerators, right. which are very which popular. We're gonna have to that's have. That's exactly right. In your plan, you have a 42 inch built-in is what you'll need for the space. Okay. And it'll be a large capacity. You have two different models here. So we have a side-by-side -side and we have a French door bottom mount. Now okay. the bo French door bottom mount is very popular because it has the freezer on the bottom. Uh -huh. But I think for your application, we'll probably go with the side-by-side -side model. You know, I've had a French door before mm -hmm. myself, and I thought that I would absolutely love it. The only thing is that I found, and a lot of times I needed both hands to pull out the drawers That's so I was exactly setting right. something down. That's exactly so right. So side-by-side, although I love the convenience of being able to put a big turkey in the bottom, Yes. The side-by-side -side really is more of my own personal style. That's right? exactly right. And that's what a lot of people say. And too, sometimes with the French door bottom out, people with the freezer on the bottom, it's hard because things get lost. Uh -huh. So they like having the whole freezer on so one unit. So they can unit. find it They all can find deal. it easily. Okay, I noticed that there's different handles they on sure here. Are. We have these big wide handles here and we have a little slimmer profile here. What's the difference? So each manufacturer kind of offers a different handle style. And this is a professional handle style. You can see a little bit beefier, sturdier, and really is the so more it's popular. Cosmetic. It is all cosmetic. So can I get this refrigerator if I wanted it, but with these kind of handles? That's exactly right. You sure can. Okay. Is that something new that a lot of manufacturers are doing? They now? are. They're doing that versatility to allow you to kind of mix and match your style and what you I prefer. I like that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a big deal when we could switch from left to right opening refrigerators. <laughs> That's exactly like right. A, all right. So now we do have a built-in range. We do. We do. 36 inch on your plan. Is this a 36? This is a 
36 inch. Okay. Now this includes a griddle on here. Now I'll tell you, Vicki, this is very popular nowadays, but if you wanted, you could do all burners. Okay. But the, the griddle is great for anything from... You don't have to sell me on a griddle. I'll tell you, I've become a whiz with my griddle on my stove. That's great. You know, it's like I can become a short order cook. Trust me, I can, I can handle bacon and eggs and hash browns. Everything, asparagus. I mean, you have, it's versatility, great uh -huh. for any family um, and wonderful. The inside the oven is also great. You know, you have your full glide racks, big space room, okay. lots of lighting in there. But let's take a look. This is one option, but one that's very popular nowadays is actually a little bit more professional look. Let's take a look at that one over okay, here. Okay, but it's still in the same size? It okay. comes in the same size. It's, this one is a little bit large for your application, uh -huh. but just imagine it if we stopped right here. So okay. we still have a single oven. All you right. still have your four burners and your griddle. But what you'll see is a professional style. So the handles, a little bit the stainless steel, a little bit beefier, the clock. You know, there's lights that actually come up under the under the bowl nose here. So lots of different kind of cool techie features that really sort lend like itself to that. Sort of like a in your kitchen. <laughs> That's huh? exactly right, exactly yeah. right. Well, I think that, you know, because as you said, people want that professional look, I think that it would be a great addition. And the cabinets I'm gonna be doing in there are gonna be gray. So oh, being able to go all stainless, mm -hmm. I like that, rather than, you know, maybe putting color knobs on. I like it. So, you know, if we go with a 36 inch range and a mm -hmm. professional look, it seems to me then that we need to get the same professional handles on the refrigerators. That's exactly right. A lot of people, you want to still stay with that design consistency throughout. Okay. Unless you're doing panels and doing your own handles, I would definitely recommend in your application staying throughout with a professional handle. All right, what about on dishwashers? Same thing with dishwashers. You can get the same you kind of handle? Do, that's exactly right, and that's exactly what we'll complete with yours. Is we'll okay. do a stainless steel front and that professional handle so it's consistent throughout, throughout the kitchen. The that's exactly well, right. Well, you know, we've solved a lot of the problems in the kitchen. We have more on our list, though. We sure do. Let's go ahead and take a look at, you'll need a wine unit. You also have laundry on there. And while you're here today, we can start looking at some of the plumbing and lighting for the home. You know, that's the reason I like to come here. It's like a one-stop shop. It's like getting your wish list all checked off on one afternoon. Well, that's what we love to have you here for and to help and assist in any way we can. Well, it's like I got here just in time, didn't <laughs> yeah. I? That is true. Thanks. Getting water to and away from a house has always been an issue for homeowners. This is Kenneth and he's with Service Plumbing. He's our master plumber on this project. Hey, how you doing? Not bad. Well, your guys have been working away. They're working right now as we talk to try to get everything ready so we can have the rough end plumbing inspection mm -hmm. for the project. This is a big renovation that we're doing here. Tell me what are the biggest challenges when you come into a project like this? A lot of times just coming in and trying to retrofit the house so we do as little damage as possible or take out as little as possible and trying to refit everything back into the house. Well now, just like with the electrician and the other workers, even though things have been here for 30 years, you can't leave them like that. They have to meet code, right? That's correct. We'll come in and we'll find things like condensate drains going to the attic, it's old style traps, we'll have to cut all that out. Old lead, we'll take most of that out and go back in with, back with PVC or cast iron. Well, I noticed here in this house, you know, we have both going, I see we have copper piping and we also have the plastic piping. Mm -hmm. Which is your choice, one over the other, or why are we using both of them? Uh, PVC is used for the drain. Uh -huh. um, it's the most cost effective way to go back with it. And then the copper, we match back to what's in the house. Okay. So therefore, we came back with copper on this house, so it's one complete system. It's not a mixed match of a system. Right, and does that cause a problem when you start going from one type of material to the other within the same system? Not typically, but it helps us if we're coming back to do work or if we're coming back a year or two later to do more work on the house, we know what type of piping's in the house. And you can just so, move forward from there. Yes. But both of them are code. You could use either one of them. That's correct. Okay. Now. I like copper piping, just myself, because I grew up thinking, you know, it's more expensive, it's the best thing mm -hmm. to go. Um, so I'm glad to see that we're staying with the system and not tearing it all out. And some of the things that we're doing in this house that some other people might not be doing is we're putting wall-mounted faucets, the master bathroom mm -hmm. here, and in the powder room, we have where our faucets come right out of the wall into vessel sinks. Mm -hmm. Because we were tearing out all the drywall, you had pretty good access to this. But what if you didn't, like in a house, in a regular bathroom, does that make the cost go up high? It, it would because it's going to affect having to fish pipes up the walls. And if you're not wanting to cut sheetrock, it's going to be impossible to get the wall valves in. Okay. Because you do have to rough in valve that you have to mount in the wall 
and secure in the wall so it doesn't pull forward or backwards or slide side to side once you put the trim on. Okay, so you're looking at more expense if you want to do that. So if you're trying to save money, go with a deck mounted faucet system. That's correct. correct. Okay, let's talk about those decks as we talk about. You know, there are certain things that really date a house and low vanities to me is a real telltale sign that the house needs to be updated. Because nowadays, how tall are people wanting their vanities to be? About 42 inches. Okay, and before they were like around 36 or <laughs> yes, something? Okay, so we're doing, of course, the 42-inch one here. Um, is that more expensive to go back up to that 40, or to go up to 42 than to stay low when you're doing a bathroom renovation? No, it doesn't make a difference to us one way or the other. Okay. If you're taking out cabinets, putting new cabinets in, the plumbing staying as is, we have extensions that we can put on. So it's just all in a day's work. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Okay, another thing that I noticed that dates a house is garden bathtubs. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing people want now in their bathroom fixtures, in the masters? The two things we're seeing now is either a bigger shower with the body sprays, handhelds, multiple shower heads. If they do stick with the tub, we're seeing a lot more freestanding tubs uh -huh. going back in, but most people are sticking with the bigger showers and, and really because that's where they're spending most of their time. Another question that I had in regards to the plumbing and, and what we're working with here is when your uh, guys get in here and they do all their rough-in plumbing, uh, you are like one of the first group of guys that are in here, mm -hmm. but then what, what stage do you come back in the construction process? Essentially, we'll come back in on the trim part of it once the paint's done, once the tops are in, essentially whenever the house is just about finished. So the tile's down, the cabinets are in, tops are on, painting's done then we'll come back and start setting fixtures. Okay, one of the other questions that I had is we are doing a floating cabinet in mm -hmm. here, a custom cabinet so that it's gonna be lit from below. Mm -hmm. But as I look at this, I see that we have some traps or some pipes coming up. Is that mm -hmm. gonna cause a problem? What we'll do, essentially the reason, you have one that's going through the floor, you have one that's having to roll out. The one having to roll out, there's a beam underneath that we can't cut because of coat. Okay. So essentially with being rolled out, what we're seeing now is the trim carpenters coming back in when they put the baseboard in. Uh -huh. They'll either float out with it or they'll just wrap around with it, picture frame around it, so to speak, or box around it. Okay. And then it hides everything underneath. Okay, so kind of a false front underneath there, but to the person walking in, it's going to look like it's floating. That's correct. Okay, because that's what you know I'm after as a designer, mm -hmm. that contemporary kind of look. And next question, seeing a lot of more contemporary fixtures going into bathrooms? A lot more now, yep. Yeah, it's always nice to know we're on the sidetrack. Well, I'm going to let you guys uh, get busy with all the rest of your Project so we can meet rough in. Thanks a lot, Kenneth. I'm looking you. forward to seeing the bathroom when it's done. Yes, ma'am. While Kenneth is working really hard to get water to this house, Nick here is working on keeping water out of the house. This is Nick Sabino, and he is with the National Roofing Contractors Association. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Hi, Vicki. You know, this house had a lot of damage from the water because they, you know, just poured over the gutters and it was allowed to get into the foundation, and we had to spend a lot of money to bring things up. How long should a roof be expected to last on a house? If you use a licensed professional roofing contractor who uh -huh. installs and designs the roof system, you should expect 25 years and beyond. Really? That long? So, you know, this house, I think we, we kind of did some research and found out it's only about three years old, so that makes it kind of a little baby. So a lot of that water damage was done prior to them putting the new roof on. Now, you said licensed contractor. What are the benefits of working with a licensed contractor as opposed to maybe just somebody that's got the lowest bid? A licensed contractor is going to look at the project in a comprehensive manner. And they're going to start with good design, uh -huh. uh, followed by good workmanship, uh, have a quality assurance inspector on site or a, a field inspector, field supervisor. Um, they're going to offer maintenance programs or service uh, programs for, for a roof system. Most roofs need to be maintained. And then finally, you want your roofing contractor to be able to warrant the roof. You want them to be accessible. How important is insulation and venting in that attic where the roof is concerned? It's very important. In the summertime, an unventilated attic could reach 160 degrees. Wow. Whereas a ventilated attic might be 105 degrees. So. Um, it's really going to increase the longevity of that roof system by minimizing the effects of expansion and contraction on the roof if it's well ventilated. How do you know if you've got the right size gutters for your house? When, when we look at the gutters for a house, what we do is we take the surface area of the roof and we also apply it to the historical rainfall data in a certain region. So um, typically a residential roof system, we would want to apply a six inch gutter to that house. Yeah, this, these are like a five inch that is here. Right. So you need to beef up that size. Okay, the other thing that I want to know is about the downspouts. Okay, so in the downspouts, you know, when they come down, 
you need to get that water away from your foundation. Whose job is all of that to work together to make that happen? Typically the downspouts are going to, the underground connection is going to be installed by a plumber and we're going to install the downspouts into the ground where the, where the plumber installs the underground. Okay, and then the landscaper guy, I guess, gets involved too because he's got digging and things going on, so they kind of work as a team right. to make that happen. Okay, what are some signs that your roof is going to fail? I don't see any spots on my family room ceiling, so I think I've got a good roof, but are there some signs? There sure are. If you look at a roof, you want to make sure the shingles are laying flat. If, if the shingles are starting to curl, it could be a sign that they're aging. Okay. Also, granules in your gutters. Um, if you see a large amount of granules in the gutters, that's not a good sign. That's, that's showing that the, the roof is really starting to deteriorate. And then the last thing I would say is making sure that the shingles have good adhesion to one another. Um, you don't want them flapping around in the wind or susceptible to blow off. Okay, so when you say granules, I'm thinking granules are just what's adding the color, but what is their real purpose? The granules protect the asphalt in the shingles from ultraviolet radiation. Oh, okay, so that they're a big role there, not just pretty okay. for us designers. Right. Okay, well, I think that, you know, we're in good shape because the roof is here, but we're not in good shape with the gutters, so I think that's where we need some fixing. Another great way to keep a lot of water out of your house is with good doors and windows. This is Bert Harold, and he is a friend of mine, and we've done a lot of projects together, haven't we? This is about our seventh or eighth one, I believe. I tell you, this one's got a lot of doors and a lot of windows, though, Bert. It was one of our larger projects, and we are very excited to be part of it. Well, you know, when you and I met like weeks ago to start making the window plans, get them together, I told you that my vision for this house was contemporary style. Right. And I'm really happy with what we turned out with, aren't you? Yes. We, we chose to go change the whole style of the house. We went with long casement type windows that uh -huh. give you long, clean lines. And it was a, it was a good process because it totally changed the whole inside and outside appearance of the home. Well, you know, you and I worked together on my house and, right. you know, we had the same uh, horizontal mullions, the same dark colors, but these windows were a little bit bigger than my windows. And so we tried not to do as much brickwork as we did down there and try to stay within their regular size, but we still got stuck with having to enlarge these windows. Why was that? Well, in a building code environment, you have to make sure that you have an egress window in a bedroom. And in order to do that, we had to enlarge the windows that were there because they were double hungs and didn't, would not allow us to meet the building code by just going back in that opening. So since we got rid of the, the double hung and went with the casement, it had to be a bigger area. That's yeah. correct. Okay, so um, in order to make the house balance, because that's a bedroom over there, mm -hmm. this is the dining room. Right. But with this style of house, everything's got a balance, so we were destined to have to enlarge this window as well. Symmetry is very important in any home and especially contemporary so we had to make everything balanced and look the same on each wing of the house. Okay originally the doors on the front of this house were very traditional it was a solid wood door it had uh, old leaded glass side lights to it mm -hmm. and that just did not lend itself to contemporary so instead we settled on these tall narrow uh, doors that to mirror what the windows are. Yes, we, we went and put in a double French door, which is a lot more glass, uh -huh. gives you a lot more clean lines again, and also it allows it to blend in with all the other windows and doors that we put in the house yeah. too. Now we'll have to do some brickwork here too and square off what was an oval opening up there to get the real effect that we want. Right. But let's talk about my favorite project here with the windows, and that's that big window back in the family room. Yes. Well, we opened that wall up completely, as you know, and we made big picture windows back there and they have no mullions in them whatsoever, so it's really going to give you, when you walk in, a pop of just a clean, contemporary-looking room in there. It's going to be beautiful. Okay, I can't wait to see that, and it's a big one, and you tell me it's going to get delivered hopefully today? It's supposed to be here later on today, so you'll get to see it be delivered, and you can help unload it. Oh, yeah, just what I want to do, Bert. <laughs> now, one uh, last thing. I went with a dark color because that's, I love that color. Yeah. What are you seeing out there, though? Because you go to job sites all day long, day after day. What are most people doing? Most people are doing darker shade colors, again, because there's a lot more contemporary, provincial type work being done here. We don't see a lot more colonial anymore, so people are Even doing... Even though we're in the south. We're, we're in the south, and but we just see more and more of contemporary homes, open spaces, long, clean lines. So the dark colors lend itself to that with any exterior you might put on the windows. Yeah, and of course we went with wood on the inside because yeah. in the inside, you know, you never know what color you're going to want to paint. But the decorator, I might try blue tomorrow and green next week, you know? You can, you have flexibility to do whatever you want to on the interior. All right, well, I want you to go check on that delivery because I want to make sure I've left the job site by the time it comes so I don't get <laughs> stuck in London. Thanks, Okay, Bert. thank you.
There is a master for this three ring circus and that would be our general contractor Josh Jones. How you doing Josh? I'm doing good today. How are you? Yeah, well listen as a ring master you must have been cracking that whip because the project's moving right along. We're trying. We're doing our best. Okay, what's our next step? Um, we're finishing the plumbing today and after that we'll need to get our inspections for plumbing and framing. We've passed electrical and HVAC already so okay. we should be in good shape. All right, and so once the guys get that done, I'm assuming that since I'm seeing a huge stack, two or three stacks of hardwood in the living room and mm -hmm. the dining room, floors are going down. They are, yep. We'll tooth in the areas that we cut back to make some repairs and we'll put the new hardwoods in the areas that we took the carpet and particle board out of. Okay. Um, the drywall guys will follow those guys um, and, and work their magic on the walls and make them look pretty. I saw that the truck was here from the plumbers. They have a tub and they're looking for another set of hands so you can get my oh hand. Oh Lord, well I better go check them out. All right, All thanks right. a lot, Josh. Have a good day. Okay, Take thanks, care. Josh. Do you want to know more about the projects today or our guests? Visit us on the web. You're going to find great behind the scenes shots, streaming video, project ideas. We even have an e-newsletter with tips and ideas. It's foryourhome.com. With all of our rough trades wrapping up this week, us getting ready for drywall, wonderful news for me. Because when the walls go up, everything really starts to take shape. Join me next time. You know you're going to want to take the tour right here on For Your Home. Gosh, what's this going to be like to go from, you might do that again, we do that. Then we do that. <laughs> Our goal is to renovate all the land that square inch. Back it up, back it up. Okay, just finish up the thing and change it, right? Yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead. You know, Charlotte has... You talk about the weather, but I can't answer you. I'm not going to work out. Yeah, can't wait for it to show up. Did you like the hardware?